Welcome guys, in this video we're going to take a look at the links with array. Okay, link is a link language integrated query. It's a very compact and convenient way of expressing queries, okay, directly in your code. And you can do this with strings, with arrays, with XML, with SQL. Alright, so we'll take a look at a, in a couple different examples over the next couple of videos. Alright, so let's type here using system and then using system.link like that. All right, we're going to say here namespace sample, and then within the namespace, we're going to say class program, and then we're going to say here static void, and then main. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is make an array. So double arr equals and now new double like this. Okay. And now we're going to get the length of the array from the user, so you can do that by typing int.parse and then console.readline like that, you see? So that's how you can get the length of the array from the user. There you go. Alright, now that we have that, we're going to say for inti equals zero, and then i is less than ar.length, and then i++, plus plus. so that looks like this. Now let me delete this code that I don't need down below. Now we'll just fill the array with some values here. So you can do that by typing the following ARR, specify the index, i, set that equal to double dot parse, and then console dot readline. And I close that with a semicolon. So this will you know prompt the user for input repeatedly. And now we're going to type variable values. Okay, and I'm going to say equals, and now you're going to specify the search criteria. So you're going to say from num in R, okay? So from the number stored in the array, where? And now you're going to specify a condition. Num is greater than or equal to zero, and that, so remember this is the double ampersand, the logical end operator, and num is less than or equal to 10. Select that number like this and close out the semicolon. Okay, so language integrated query, as you can see here, you can you know type this directly into your C sharp and use some of the features of C sharp like the double ampersand and so on. All right, so <clears throat> now of course the double ampersand is a common feature throughout languages. It's not specific to C sharp. Now <clears throat> you're going to do a for each double d and values. Okay, like this. So for each double called D and the values here, we're going to type console dot right line and the value is and then put a placeholder, comma D and close that with a semicolon. There you go. At the end, let's type console dot read key and close that with a semicolon. Right, let's delete this. So here's our code. There you go. So we have two namespaces. We have a class program. We have our main method. We'll get the size of the array from the user. We'll fill the si array by continually prompting the user. Then we have link here. So from number in array where the number is between 0 and 10, select that number. Get that number out and store it over into values. And then use a for each loop to go through it and display them. Give it a build, make sure it takes. All right, so let's hit start. Okay, so remember first, you should have a prompt, right? That's, you know, but for our purposes, so I'll enter 10, I'll enter 12, I'll enter minus five, I'll enter six, eight, and now it says the value is 10, six, and eight, and the other values have been excluded. There you go. All right, so this, for example, as you see, allows you to go through arrays in a very kind of, you know, direct way. And now, we go debug and step into it's worth seeing here because it will show some stuff. So, I get that from the user first, say four, hit enter. There you go. So, ARR, as you can see now, has zero, one, two, three as the indices and four entries in all. 
And now, of course, we will go in folder array, so put a 6. There you go. I go to the array, put a, say, minus 8, hit enter. All right, and then say, put a 7, hit enter. And then put an 8, hit enter. So that looks like that. All right, so let's go on to the next step. And now if you hold your mouse over values, you can expand that, you see? And here when you see that little symbol, you can click that. And it tells you at 0 we have that. You see 1 and 2 and so on, you see? And you can expand a lot of these other ones also. And remember, when you see that little two arrow symbol, click that. And then there you go. So there are a lot of different things that you can click here, and I should show some, hopefully, you know, additional information. There you go. If you expand values, also down below, the same principle applies, you see? It tells you at 0, 1, and 2 what's stored. There you go. It tells you the index. There you go, the source. It looks like this. Okay. A lot of little, you know, technical details. But basically, we have something that we can search, and then that's why we can use the for each loop with it. Like that to display the values. All right, and that is it for this video. So, as you can see, this link stuff is really helpful because you can write, you know, somewhat fairly expressive code directly right here in C Sharp and search arrays and a lot of other constructs in a way that, you know, resembles a somewhat natural way of searching for things. Okay, and going through things, analyzing things. Thanks very much.